everyone, I am Aina Venus A. Gonzalez, a BA Ed second year student in North Sochaton campus. For today's video, I am going to discuss about the global historical foundations of education, specifically during the ancient period and the middle or medieval period. I am going to start with prehistoric and primitive cultures. The term education can be applied to primitive cultures only in the sense of enculturation. Ano ba ang enculturation? It is the process of cultural transmission. A pr primitive person whose culture is the totality of his universe has a relatively fixed sense of cultural continuity and timelessness. So ang tao pala dati ay talagang uh, mapagmahal sa kanilang kultura. Kaya, ang education or ang education para sa kanila is to guide children to becoming good members of their tribe or band. So, ang ibig sabihin ng enculturation ay ang pagpapasa ng kanilang kultura sa mga bata. So, ganun ang kanilang edukasyon noong unang panahon. A mark emphasis upon training for citizenship because primitive people are highly concerned with the growth of individuals as tribal members and the thorough comprehension of their way of life through or during passage from pre-puberty to post-puberty. So, ano ba ang pre-puberty na edukasyon at post-puberty na edukasyon? In pre-puberty, children genuinely participate in the social processes of adult activities, and their participatory learning is founded on empathy, identification, and imitation as defined by the American anthropologist Margaret Med. The primitive children, before reaching puberty, learn by doing and observing basic technical practices. Their teachers are not strangers but rather their immediate community or their parents or their family. In contrast to the spontaneous and rather unregulated imitations in pre-puberty education, post-puberty Education in some cultures is strictly standardized and regulating. The teaching professional may consist of fully initiated men, often unknown to the initiate, though they are his relatives in other clans. Ang initiation ay nagsisimula with the initiate being abruptly separated from his family and sent to the secluded camp where he joins other initiates. Primitive people in some cultures regard the body of knowledge constituting the initiation curriculum as most essential to their tribal membership. Within this essential curriculum, religious instruction takes the most prominent place. We are going to proceed with ancient Egypt. Egyptian culture and education were preserved and controlled chiefly by the priest, a powerful intellectual elite in the Egyptian theocracy who also served as the political bulwarks by preventing cultural diversities. Ito ang priest o pare sa Egypt. The humanities as well as such practical subjects as science, medicine, Mathematics and geometry were in the hands of the priests who taught in formal schools. Vocational skills relating to such fields as architecture, engineering, and sculpture were generally transmitted outside the context of formal schooling. Egyptians developed two types of formal schools for privileged youth under the supervision of governmental officials and priests. Ang isa ay for scribes and the other for priest trainees. At the age of five daw, ang mga bata or pupils entered the writing school and continued their studies in reading and writing until the age of 16 or 17. Ito ay para sa scribes. 
at the age of 13 or 14, the school boys were also given practical training in offices for which they were being prepared. Priesthood training began at the Temple College, which boys entered at the age of 17. Egyptian Formal Schools Rigid method and severe discipline were applied to achieve uniformity in cultural transmission, since deviation from the traditional pattern of thought was strictly prohibited. So, di ba nga nung una, ang mga pare or sila yung mga namumuno sa edukasyon nung sinaunang mga Egyptian. Kaya, uh, dapat um, formal ang lahat, ang lahat ay nagkakaisa, walang cultural diversity sa kanilang lugar. Drill and memorization were the typical methods employed. But as note, Egyptians also used a work-study method in the final phase of training for scribes or yung mga pagsusulat at pagbabasa. Mesopotamia Mesopotamia developed education quite similar to that of its counterpart with respect to its purpose and training. Formal education was practical and aimed to train scribes and priests. It was extended from basic reading and writing and religion to higher learning in law, medicine, and astrology. Generally, youth of the upper classes were prepared to become scribes who range from copyists to librarians and teachers. The school for priests have many temples, and in Mesopotamia or Iraq nowadays, the library was the center of the intellectual activity and training. Methods of teaching and learning were memorization, oral repetition, copying models, and individual instruction. It is believed that the exact copying of scripts was the hardest and most trinocious and served as the test of excellence in learning. The period of education was long and rigorous, and discipline was harsh. In ancient China, the focus is the molding of character. Ethical teachings stress the importance of human relations and the family as the foundation of society. Filial pity, especially emphasizing respect for the elder, was considered to be the most important virtue in the ancient China education. Colombian civilizations, which are the Maya, the Aztecs, and the Incas, their 
purpose of the education were cultural conversation, conservation or ang pagpapasa ng kultura, vocational training para sa kanilang pamumuhay, at moral and character training and control of cultural division. So, the Maya, the Aztecs, and Incas, ang purpose talaga ng edukasyon sa kanila ay ang pag-preserve ng kultura at hindi pagwatak-watak ng kanilang kultura.